Hi, this is Everless Bible Study. I'm not sure what happened before. Apparently, maybe it wasn't giving to people. It wasn't online. I don't know. So, we're just going to restart the whole thing. So, Romans 8.1. Romans 8.1. So last week, we, always, we talked about redemption, how you've been redeemed. You've been redeemed from every curse. You've been redeemed. You've, you've been taken, you've been bought back from and made a new man through the redemption, the redemption work of our Lord Jesus at the cross. So, Romans 8.1. We'll just go back, right, right back to that. So, Romans 8.1 is, there is there no, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. That's where the verse ends. So, like I said before, that the next line, I'm sure it, it might say in your New King James or NIV that, who, for those who walk in the flesh or walk in the spirit, that's actually verse 4. If you go to the Greek text, the actual Greek, this is how it ends. It ends, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. That's where it ends. Because if you see that extra, it's actually verse 4, where somebody took verse 4 when they were translating it to English, and they added it there, because apparently... They thought it was good, too good to be true. So, Matt, what, okay, so, like I asked you before, what does it mean to be in Christ? Uh, to have God live, live inside you. Well, that's true, but you're in Christ. He is in you as well. Yeah. But being in Christ, it means that you are a new creation. New creation? New creation. You've passed over from death to life. You're a new man. To be in Christ. Okay? So, as he, as he is in heaven, so are we on this world. In Christ. Whenever God sees you, the Father, He sees you, He sees His Son. When he see, because you are in Him, and He is in you. That's, that's, that's what it means. Because of His work at the cross. Having died, we all have died. We died to our old man. We died in Christ, Paul puts it. That we died in Christ, and we've been raised up together and created a new person. We're new now. You know, we're, 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 we're raised again righteous and holy. You're right. Everyone who has believed... You are now all the same righteousness and holiness as Jesus is in heaven. There's nothing you can do to lose it because you did nothing to get it. It's a gift. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. Nothing you did by your performance got you righteous and, and holy. And nothing by Jesus' performance got him sin. Sin was imputed. Righteousness was imputed to you. Right? It's not about our performance. <laughs> nothing we can do can ever make us not Make us, it, that's why there's no condemnation. We can't ever go back to sin. We, never, we can't ever go back to, we do sin, okay? We can't ever go back and make ourselves unqualified. That's more of the term. You're never unrighteous because it's a gift, right? right? Sin cannot be imputed because it's imputed to Jesus, Amen. right? Like it says in Romans, by one man's offense, many were made sinners, but, you know, by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. Jesus. Okay, that's Jesus. Jesus was the man, by his obedience, made you righteous. Because you, by faith. Faith? What is faith, Matt? Uh, believing something. Faith is, it is believing. You're right, you're right. Faith is believing. Because, you know what, faith in the Greek is actually the word pis, pistis, which means a conviction of the truth. What, it, what does it mean to be convicted by the truth, you know? So being convicted by the truth is, you know what? Whenever you hear the gospel, and you see it in the scriptures, it, it, it registers with you, and you believe it. You believe it because you hear it. Amen. Because you know what it says in Romans ten seventeen? Faith comes by hearing. It's nothing you can muster. You can't muster faith. I used to always think, you know what? I gotta have this great faith. Oh, faith! <laughs> I gotta, oh, if I want to move that mountain, I better get the faith working. Ooh. Hmm. Faith is not juice and it's not anything you can do. Faith comes. Comes. It's easy. Faith comes easily, right? It's not that, you know what? Everyone wants to have this, I have this mega faith. This mega faith that can move that mountain. You know what? It's easier just to rest in his faith. Because he says it and he'll do it. God says you're righteous. He says you're loved. He says you're blessed. Let's just take him for his word. Amen? Amen? Because you know what? That's resting in His faith. Because His faith moves the mountains anyways. Alright, we're going to go to actually one of my favorite stories. And it's, um, it's actually about that. It's Luke chapter 5. 
Luke chapter 5. I must I talk about this story all the time. It's one of my favorite stories. First what? It's just chapter 5. Just go to Luke chapter 5. <clears throat> and so I'll just read the story. This is actually the miraculous catch of fish. I talk about I love this story. Because, I mean, we can always, sometimes we want to be like Peter. And Peter is always so self-confident. He's trusted his flesh more than he, he should be trusting in the words of Jesus. Jesus is the Savior, you know. But G Peter always wants to say, oh man, I love you more than you can ever imagine. And, he, and Jesus is like, Peter, I love you. But you're already going to deny me because you, you're not resting in my love. See, John got it. Peter didn't. See, it's so it's so it's so amazing that that Peter Peter is just like he's so loved by Jesus, but he's always trusting in himself, and John's always trusting in the Savior. That's why he's called the disciple whom Jesus loved. That's John, and John his name in the Greek means God's grace. Peter in the Greek means stone. We know what is the stone? What was the ministry of death, Matt? What was it engraved on? Stone. That's right. The ministry of death was written in the grave on stones. The Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments is always about our self-effort. Can I get it myself? Can I do it all by my own self? That's kind of how Peter lived his life. <laughs> until, the, until Jesus, you know, got him straightened out just by his love. He had to receive Jesus' love, you know? It's all about us resting in the love. Not us trying to, oh, Jesus, I love you more than you love me. It's not possible. <laughs> All right, amen. All right, so we're gonna get this story. So, miraculous catch of fish. So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God that he stood by Lake Gennesaret. Don't know how to say that. And saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone in from them and were washing their nets. Okay, so basically, I'll give you the synopsis. So the disciples, they're just, they're they just went fishing. They went fishing all night. They went fishing all night. So it says that, you know, they, they were now they're cleaning their nets. They're cleaning them. And Peter's sitting over here, he's cleaning his net. And Jesus is preaching. Because that's Jesus' preacher. He preaches. He's, and he's a carpenter. So I don't think Jesus knows a lot about fishing, but Peter knows a lot about fishing. He grew up a fisherman his whole life. He was always a fisherman. And so and so he's confident in himself because he's confident in his in his self thing that I've done this my whole life, I know what I'm doing, right? So he, uh, so Jesus, he gets into Simon's boat. He so says he gets into his boat and he sits down because Jesus is cool. Jesus is a really cool guy. He always is resting. That's a picture of Jesus. You know, he's a loving guy. He always has compassion for people and he's he's chilling. He's cool. Like Hint the fonts. He said it's buffering. It's buffering. No, it's not on mine. Oh, is it on the Wi-Fi, Matt? I don't even know if I have it on the Wi-Fi. Oh, I'm just keep going. No, it's, 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 uh, I, it's going. Okay. Anyways. Um, okay. When we had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. So Jesus says, let down your nets for a catch. You can check and see if the Wi-Fi is fine. Just check pull it, it up. Yeah, just check it out. Check it out. Right quick. Okay. Hold on one second, we're gonna see if I'm connected to my butt. Just just do it right quick. Scroll it up. You got it? You're connected. Okay, cool. Alright, cool. I don't see him there. Yeah, Matt's got it fixed it. So alright, cool. Sorry for the technical difficulty. Apparently it was buffering, so we just wanted to check. The Wi-Fi was strong, and so cool. So, anyways, Jesus is actually he says that he, he okay. So let's get back to it. Jesus hops in Peter's boat. Peter fished all night, never caught anything. Peter didn't catch anything. Jesus hops in his boat, okay, and he says, "Let down your nets for a catch." All right. He says nets. That's plural. Nets. That's more than one net. Okay. If, I, if I'm reading that right, nets. Right? Is right. net is nets more than one? Yeah. Right? Okay, nets is more than one. Okay, cool. Um, so he said, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. I think net is singular. Am I right? Okay. So basically, you know, he's 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 telling Jesus about his performance. All night I've been out in this this hole right here. We didn't catch nothing. 
All right. She is, he's trying to tell Jesus, this, there's no fish in this pond. There is no fish left. Jesus is he's like, okay, at your word, I'll let down the net, okay? Let me just, let's just look at this scenario. There's a lot of people that are watching Jesus. There's a lot, his friends are around. And think, if Peter does not want to throw this net in, he is not trusting Jesus. He's not resting and he's not, he's, he's not having faith. If we're, faith is him believing Jesus, he doesn't believe Jesus. Let me tell you. Because he's like, this one's on you, Jesus. I'm going to throw down one net. Singular. If he was believing, he would have let down the nets. Right. <laughs> so he, he's like, at your word, okay, this one's on you, Jesus, okay? I'm not taking any... No, no, I'm not taking any... Uh, what is it? Or what is the word I'm thinking of? Um, it's not taking, you know, any... Um, whoa, I can't even think of it. Any reward for the... Yeah, 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 I can't even think of the word. So he's not taking um, any credit. Credit for the throw. Credit for the throw. So, he throws it out. He throws it out, and what happens? What happens, Matt, when he throws it out? He couldn't uh, lift up the net. Yeah, he couldn't pull it in. That's right, he's trying to pull in this net. He, he throws it out there, and he's like, whoa. I whoa. Can't, can't even pull it in. It's so many fish. There's so many fish, and he can't even pull it in. So he pulls it in, and they, and they had a call over. I was like, hey, bro, go, go get your boat. Bring it over here. We've got a big catch. They bring all the fish in, and it's enough to fill up two boats. And the boats begin to sink. Wow, that's amazing. That's so amazing. That's, that's God's goodness. But even whenever you don't believe, He believes. You know what? That's, we just rest in His faith. Because He's faithful and just. And He's always going to, you know what? Wherever you seek, you're going to find. When you ask, it's going to be given. You know what? Because he, he said it would happen. His faith it, it trumps our faith. You know? Yeah, yeah. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Amen? So even whenever there's a lack of faith, because Peter lacked a lot of faith. This guy was sinking when he was walking on water. He was always looking back to his flesh. Man, but whenever you're resting in him, resting in his faith, resting in his goodness, your boats are going to overflow. You're going to be overflowing with health. You're going to be overflowing with richness. You're going to be overflowing with favor whenever you rest in his faith, rest in his goodness, rest in his love, rest in his perfect work. Amen. Our work doesn't matter. Amen? Amen. We, we, we do stuff, it doesn't last. Jesus did stuff to last. His cross, he, he will all, it'll always last. His work is eternal. And it's always good. And it's always love for you. Because he loves you. And he values you. And he wants the best for your life. Amen. You know that? He wants Amen. the best. Amen. You know, Jesus did not come to condemn you. He did not come to accuse you. He did not come to judge you. I'm going to actually take you to those three verses. But because he, he loves you so much. He loves, he loves everything about you. And he, you know what your father says? He says you're his son in whom he's well pleased. You're his child. You're his daughter in whom he's well pleased. And you know what? He's always, always, always proud of you. No matter what you do. Amen. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Even if we, you know what? We always seem, when we screw up, we feel bad. We just want to condemn ourselves. We want to soak it. Because we, we feel guilty. Because we feel like, man, I, I let everybody down. You know what? God does not want you right there. Because self-condemnation is, is, is a form of self-righteousness. That you're saying that i got to pay for something that Jesus has already paid for. If he already paid for your sins, past, present, future, they're already paid. Yeah. No matter what you do tomorrow, it's already been paid. Amen? I'm not saying you have a license to sin. I'm saying there's no condemnation. There's no condemnation for you. God doesn't want you in that. Because don't receive that condemnation. Because that's an accusation. Because the devil wants you to be there. He wants to accuse you. He want, That's what the devil's name means. What, do you know what his name means, Matt? Satan. Satan, that's right. It's actually in the Greek. Has Satan. Means accuser of the brethren of the brethren. The devil always comes to accuse you. Jesus and the Father always come to love you. And they always want to justify you. Amen. They always want good for you. They always want to bring you up. That's Amen. that that's their goal. That's that's what this ministry is about. We talked about last week. It's the ministry of reconciliation, the ministry of redemption. It's about telling you who you are. It's about telling you how much he loves you. It's about telling you how much good he has planned for you today. 
Amen? Amen. Anyways, so, you know what happened right here? We'll get back to the story. So, what happened to Peter? The, the boats are sinking. He's, he's thinking, oh my gosh. What does he do? He falls down on his knees and he's like, God, depart from me, I'm a sinful man. I mean, that, that, that shows you how much he wasn't trusting Jesus. But you know what? Jesus pulls through, even wherever you don't trust. Isn't that good? Because that's, that's his goodness. And you know what? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The same. If he's the same here, he'll be the same here today as he was here. Whenever, forever. You know that? Amen. 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 He's always good. So it says that, you know, James and John saw this and they followed. They forsook everything that they would follow Jesus. It's awesome. James and John. John is the guy who actually wrote this, the Gospel of John. That's John. Became a disciple after that. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go to um, John, um, John chapter 8. John chapter 8. And let's just go to, first we're going to go to verse 15. Actually, let's just, let's just go through this. The one we caught in the Joel tree. It's a great story. I love this story. It's about no condemnation. Amen. So, all right, so I'll just give you a rundown of what happened. So, Jesus is preaching in the temple. He's preaching, he's preaching, and he's hanging out with his buds, his disciples. He had 12 of them, you know, so he's hanging out. And the, um, the Pharisees are looking for some way. They've, all this time, they've been looking for some way to accuse Jesus. So, you know what? They find this woman. She's caught in adultery. She's probably, you know, probably gotten trapped into this by one of the Pharisees. You just never know. And so they take her and they just throw her right in the mid, right in the temple, right in the front of Jesus, and say, "Hey, Jesus, what do they say right here?" They say, um, "Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act." Now Moses in the law commanded us that such oak should be stoned, but what do you say? See, and they said right here, they say this testing him that, that they might have something to accuse him. They're trying to accuse Jesus. That's, they're, they're trying to get. They're trying to just. Follow Jesus. Because they want him to go against the law. Right. They don't realize Jesus wrote the law. He wrote the law a long time ago. And he's always obeying the law. Because that's Jesus. He came to fulfill the law. He's always good. Amen? Amen. 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 Alright, so. Jesus, Jesus is sitting down whenever they come in. So everyone's standing. The woman's standing. It says that he stoops down to ride on the ground. He's just riding with his finger. So the temple would have been stoned. Stone. It would not be, you know, if you see in the Passion of Christ, it looks like dirt or some kind of like. It's actually a stone floor. So he's just writing with his finger on the stone, stooped down. What is the significance of, Matt? I know you know it. Uh, the Ten Commandments. That's right. Okay, so I'm going to give you a rundown right quick. What is other the notes. Significant of this? So this is significant of, okay, so whenever people want to use the law, where, 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 Matt, where's the Ten Commandments at? Whatever back, when, where, where, where did they put the Ten Commandments in? The Tabernacle. No, no, they um, did, but they put it inside a box. A what box, was that yeah. box? Um, the, the, the Ark. The Ark. All right, you got it. You know where it is. Yeah. The Ark of the Covenant. So, you know, there's three things in the Ark we talked about it last week. The Ten Commandments. The Rod of Aaron. Yeah. And, the, and, the, tab and, the, and, the, and the, man, the Golden Man that rained from heaven. So, they put these things in the Ark, okay? So, if you want to use the Ten Commandments... What do you have to do to get to the Ten Commandments? If they're in the ark and the mercy seat's on top of the ark, what do you have to do? If I want to physically get to the tent to read them, the open. You have to, that's right. You have to bend over to take it out. You have to, yeah, that's right. You have to take the mercy seat off yeah. and you have to put it on the ground to get to the Ten Commandments. Yeah. And the mercy seat is hand beaten gold. The mercy seat, back in the old days, whenever they would take a sacrifice to pay for your sins. They would take the blood of the lamb and they would sprinkle it on top of the mercy seat. Because you know what? Beneath man's rejection, all, everything that's, the law is always below grace. The mercy seat is a picture of grace. It's a picture of the finished work. It's a picture because they sprinkle the blood on top of the mercy seat. Okay? Because God cannot see through his son's blood. His blood covers you. His blood covers you. Okay? So, if the blood covers you and the, the mercy seat is grace, that is the finished work of Christ. Right? Amen? That's grace. So, to get to the law, they have to put grace on the ground. So, that's why Jesus stooped down. 
Because Jesus is the person of grace. Whenever they were using the law, Jesus stooped down, saying, I wrote the law. Saying, I wrote it. That's why he's writing on stone. The only other time that God ever wrote on a stone was whenever he was back in Exodus when he wrote the Ten Commandments on stone. Amen? Amen. What did he say to him? Amen. What? What did he say to him? him? All right, well, we got to get to it. You're going going ahead of me, all right? So I'm just giving you a picture that the mercy seat on top of the ark, and then you got the Ten Commandments inside. The grace is a higher than law. Grace, law. When you fall from grace, you go to the law. These guys fell from grace into the law. That's why they're using it against people. That's why people condemn people. Because they look around. Oh, they're, they start looking at themselves. I don't measure up. So you don't measure up either. But whenever you look at Jesus, you see that he already measured up for you. And you're already good. Amen? Amen. Because Amen. that's grace. So to get to the law, you have to put down grace. You have to throw Joseph in that pit. You have to, that's what you do. If you want to exalt the law, you have to put grace down. That's why Jesus stooped down. Amen? Okay. So Jesus, as you said, he raised himself up. He says, he who is without sin, cast the first stone. He who is without sin among you, let him throw the first stone at her first. Okay? And then it says he stooped down again to ride on the ground. Whenever Moses came down with the first set of Ten Commandments, he came down, he's carrying the Big Ten. Here's the Big Ten. And you know what? What was down there, Matt? They, what were the Israelites doing? Worshipping a, a, an idol. That's right. They're worshipping a golden calf. What's the first commandment on the Ten Commandments? Matt? You know it? Um, to love thy God with all thy heart. My That's right. The you shall know their gods before me. They broke the first commandment. They didn't even know what it was. It's funny. Okay, so he's going down. Moses sees this. And he breaks all ten right there because he throws them on the ground. They all break. They're brittle stones. So they all just shattered, all ten. So Jesus had to go back up for the second step. Good thing God made copies, all right? Amen? All right. So he went back up. And that's why he stooped down twice. Because God wrote on stone twice. The Ten Commandments were written twice. Okay? You understand that? That's why Jesus stooped down again. And it says that all the Pharisees, they walked out one by one, convicted by their own conscience. Because they were looking, you know what? I have sinned. I have sinned. Who am I to judge this person? I've done. I've been wrong. That's the thing about the law. The law, you know what? You break one, they all are equal. Sin is sin. It's all the same. Amen? 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 You you know what? Thank God that Jesus already paid for it. Thank God it doesn't get imputed to us anymore. Amen? We don't have to have the knowledge of sin. We have the knowledge of the wind. It's already been taken care of. And we have no condemnation because we're in Christ. The wind Amen. is Jesus. The wind is Jesus. The wind is, he finished it at the cross. He defeated all sin. He defeated death. He defeated every enemy. You were re- you, you declared righteous, blameless, loved because of what he did. Amen. 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 So you know what? It said that the, the woman was left standing in the midst. So she's standing there. She just goes up to her. And he says, you know what? Woman, where are your accusers? Has no one condemned you? And she said, no one, Lord, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. So apparently, no condemnation leads to no more sin. Amen. Amen? Amen. But whenever you have the knowledge of sin, that's when you sin. Whenever you know it's already been taken care of, you don't have to worry about it. You're already forgiven. You're forgiven forever. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's all good. It's a gravy train because Jesus already did it. He's, he made... The starting post for your life, he brought you to the finish line. It's finished. It's the last word he said. You are complete in him. In, Col- in Colossians 2, verse 10, you have been made complete in him. You are complete. You know what that word complete in the Greek means? That word, let's just go to it right quick. Colossians 2, verse 10. Colossians 2, verse 10. And you are complete in him who is head of all principality and power. Okay. This word complete means lib- liberally supplies. Liberally supplies. What does it mean, liberally? That means, you know what? It's not conservatively. It's liberally. <laughs> you remember, you tip, you tip a lot. Okay. Supply, when you supply, you supply a lot. Amen. It's abundance. Amen. That's what it means whenever you're complete. Abundant supply because you are already complete in him is coming towards your life. Amen. That's where we're at. We're at 
the finish line. You know what? It's not about us striving anymore. Jesus already strived. It's done. Amen? And there's nothing that could ever be done to take it away from you. When Romans 8, 1, I love that my pastor said this last Sunday. He actually said, you know what? Because it, it, it starts, the first verse of um, Romans 8, 1 is, there's no condemnation. And the last verse, there's no, no one can separate us from the love of Jesus. Amen. Oh, I love that because Pastor Eric was like, it starts out with no condemnation and ends with no separation. Nothing can separate you, amen, amen from Jesus. Amen. Amen. Nothing can ever take you out of being in Christ. Nothing. Because you're already there. Amen. When you're there, you're holy, blameless, love, a child of the Most High, and you're never going to be condemned and never going to be accused and never going to be judged. Amen? Why, 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 do, why do people judge people then? I don't understand. People go out and, you know, it's... A lot of people from the church. Because you know what? They haven't had a revelation of grace yet. They haven't seen how much love Jesus had. They, haven't, they haven't, haven't, haven't seen the love. You know what? What did it say that, you know what? Whoever people love much because they've been forgiven much. When you know you've been forgiven for everything, you love. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? When you rest in His love, you love. Amen. So they need a revelation of grace. Because grace is love. That's what the gospel is about. The gospel is about His love for you. His love for me. His love for everyone. Amen. Grace is about the people. Jesus loves people. Amen. Jesus loves people. Amen. You know why? Because even after these guys have done this and they said this, he went after them too. You know that? The next verse, it says, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. That's wrong. This is John 8 again. He followed the Pharisees, okay? So they left. He told her, I don't condemn you. And now he went after them. Those are, those are still lost sheep. And Jesus, he's the, he's the good shepherd. He's yeah. never going to stop chasing you down, even when you're in the wrong. Even whenever you're condemning people, he's still going after them too. Amen? Amen. That's amazing. It's amazing, his love. His love for them as well. So he went after them, and what does he say in verse 15? He says, you judge according to the flesh, and I judge no one. Jesus doesn't judge anyone. Amen. Amen. He doesn't condemn you. He doesn't judge you. He only loves you. So let's right. let's let's get more of some love. You know what? Because he already his love was the cross. Amen. His love was his work. Amen. And that means whenever he sat down, after he finished his work, he sat down. He sat down so that he could be resting from all of his work. And we're in him. So we rest in him. We rest in his work. We rest that all the work's been completed. We just rest in His love for us. Amen. 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 So, no condemnation. It's amazing. It's just amazing. It's a love. So, I guess what I have to say, guys, I think this is going to be a short message because I, I just feel so good that, you know what, there's it, no condemnation just makes it's a big It's a big part of our life. We don't have to walk in that anymore. Amen. We don't have to walk in feeling condemned. Because when we feel that, whenever it comes against us, when we condemn ourselves, that's the highest form of self-righteousness. The highest form of self-righteousness is that, I, I, you know what, I feel so bad, i got to punish myself. But it's already been punished on Jesus. Jesus is saying, you know what, you don't have to feel that way. Amen. I don't want that for you. I want only goodness for your life. Amen? Amen? He doesn't want that. He wants you to keep on walking and how much He loves you. Walk in love. Keep on resting in His goodness. Rest in His love. That He already paid for everything for your life. He already gave you every blessing from heaven. He already, he's already given you healing. You have His unmerited favor. You are valuable. Your Father in heaven values you. And He crushed His Son because He loves you. And he didn't, he didn't come to condemn you. He does not mad at you. He loves you. And He wants you to come home. Come back to favor. Come back to His grace. Come back to His abundant life for you. I think that's, that's what the Lord wants to talk about. Thank you, Jesus.